All right, welcome everybody. Welcome. We're thrilled you're here. This is Drew Jones at Climate Interactive, and I'm here with Yazzie and Ellie and Janet, Caroline and Clara, and we're thrilled that you're here for this trainee meetup. See a lot of faces, a lot of familiar faces now. Happy to see you, and we'd love to hear where you're from, uh, and please go to Poll Everywhere. You know how to do this now. The link is at the top. Uh, please click in up to twice. Where do you sit today, but where do you feel that you're from as well, if there are two places? I see someone in Spain. We have some East Coast United States. So hopefully the technology is gonna support you to use good old Poll Everywhere and click on here. Two in Spain, some more, is that Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, Argentina, some UK, oh, Russia. Is that Nepal out there? Elliot, your geography was good. Any, anyone else on our team actually where your uh, geography better than mine, please name places that you can see. As we welcome you from all around the world, we're so happy to see the pins showing up. Argentina, Hong Kong, it looks like, uh, maybe Israel, a bunch of people in the United States um, coming from all over, mostly the Northeastern United States, East Coast, West Coast, some people there in the middle, somebody Taiwan, up there in Northeast Canada. Yeah. <laughs> An island nation. Fantastic. Great to see where people are coming from. Um, uh, we got a clarification. Sikkim, India, next to Nepal. Ah, okay, <laughs> thank you. Albany, New York, Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, near Jerusalem and Israel, Winnipeg, Canada, Mexico, Arkansas, Houston, Texas, Australia. Fantastic. All right, well, as you know, we're Climate Interactive. We work closely with our partners at MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative to bring you En-ROADS. And we wanted to just lead, really just, we like to, in our meetings here at Climate Interactive, we always do a check-in about what's been coming up in the world that you might be thinking about. And if you are as serious about climate as we are, you might be thinking about this new IPCC report that just came out. And even if you saw the media, maybe you saw the report itself, but we just like to just check in, how are people <laughs> feeling what's coming up? So one word or two hyphenated words. If you have two words, put a hyphen between the two of them, hearing poll everywhere, shocked, scared, confused, unprintable, sad. And if you see a word here that really resonate with, say, write it and it'll get bigger. Not surprised, anxiety, publishing, worry, concern, despondent, urgency, waking, meh, scared, earnest, not surprised, unprintable, panic, worry, motivated, sad, wake up, confused, motivated, urgency, doomed, shocked, urgency. Thank you, this is great. Let it out. Like we do with these workshops. If you don't give space for how people are feeling about things, those feelings show up as questions that are being asked that really aren't questions. Give space for all of this to be named in your events around En-ROADS. Otherwise it shows up ways, ways that are not helpful. This is great to see, yikes. Fantastic, thank you. All right. Well, you've also been watching these videos, been taking the quizzes, doing things and taking action. So we wanna ask a next question. Boy, they're still coming in. Keep writing if you like. But I want to switch to this next question. Uh, just a little, we always find coming from gratitude and appreciation, it also is helpful to us. What's been your favorite recent a video, an idea, a part of the training, or something 
multi-solving, thank you. The rubber band, oh, people watch the rubber band video. I'm glad you saw that. Multi-solving, again, fantastic. The stretch band, the rubber band. System dynamics, yeah, we've really been trying to open the door on using system dynamics framework to understand En-ROADS, integrating multi-solving. The, the rubber band reading, again, so interesting. Multi-solving, fantastic. Flower, the tool that we use for multi-solving. And all these links to multi-solving, yes, I wonder, can you just drop a link to the people who haven't been to that webpage yet or all the resources and for Flower so people see it? And maybe for the people who haven't seen it yet, the link, could you drop the link to the rubber band, rubber band video? And there's a second video that talks about using the rubber band. By the way, Caroline, Caroline, you made all those beautiful graphics. So uh, just props to her. Feedback loops, the game, ice on fire, the UN role play game, great. The climate action simulation, system dynamics. Isn't it wonderful to get system dynamics in use as you're doing right now? Again, the quizzes, be a facilitator, not an advocate. We're gonna get a chance to do that today. And that it's counterintuitive, right? <laughs> We're all advocates for the climate, but the effective strategy, be a facilitator. Second, the rubber band. Yeah, so there's the rubber band video, and then there's a second, how to use it. The truth sandwich, many seeds for a garden. The elephant idea, the elephant idea of uh, a systems view, justice, climate justice, equity, the game, great. Happy to see how you're using it. It takes many seeds to plant a garden. Someone's adding that one. The truth sandwich. The truth sandwich is helpful. Many other approaches aren't as helpful. The truth sandwich is helpful. That was an example of the truth sandwich. The accuracy. Oh, great. I'm glad you see that. Our scientists, modelers are going to love hearing that. Addressing the psychology and the feelings of participants. Absolutely. It's essential. Understanding the co-benefits. The energy of Ellie and Drew. Thank you. System dynamics. All right. Okay, I'm going to move us on. Keep writing if you like. Simulation. Okay, so what we're going to do, training updates. That's what we're doing right now. Then we're going to dig into reasons for delay. We found this great paper someone else wrote about the top 12 things that come up when people talk about why we don't really need to take significant action. We're going to have experience of thinking about how to use En-ROADS to address those discourses of delay, as they call it. And then we're gonna have some more bonus time, but also another chance in breakout rooms to meet people in your sector. So some great news, people are using the tool, right? This is not an intellectual training course. This is a practical training course to get some tools and use the tools. And we've seen more and more evidence that people are doing that. You and other people in the community this summer, since July 1st, we've had 113 events registered and not just run. Many more have probably been run. But the key here is that people are actually clicking on the button, telling us and our funders that it's happening. We can learn from it. Our funders have confidence that giving money to Climate Interactive means that people will actually run events. 3,797 participants 31 countries. You've been posting beautiful pictures into the community space in Learn Worlds or sending it to us. Uh, some of these are on LinkedIn. I'm just going to flip through them and not call out the names, but here are some people. Look at, I think that's dad off there. He's not as engaged in the workshop in the top right, but here's somebody running a workshop. Looks like for a, possibly for family. Here's another one on Zoom. Uh, this is a group, it looks like, on Zoom, engaging people together. Uh, this is in, there's Jackie Chang, great in simplified Chinese, I think. 1.2 degrees, fantastic. And all these, oh, actually, I read about this one. Jackie wrote that this was a group of educators. Uh, here is another one, Ariane and Kristen and Nerissa. They got one, two degrees by boosting renewables. Thank you for posting that picture. We just found this one this morning, Ido Samuel in Nigeria, 500 people in Lagos. Look how beautiful that is, all those people. Um, I didn't get the name, but you posted your secretary general speech 
which we asked you to do and challenged you, and several people did. Uh, it took a video of it there in the UN meeting halls to practice making that speech as part of the climate action simulation game. Here's somebody introducing it to uh, someone, perhaps a family member in the living room or in the dining room. Great. So please keep sharing this. It's so inspirational to us and we think each other. Give us evidence of people making a difference in the world. It builds hope. It builds possibility. So this is number eight. You have hung in there all of these different training modules. And maybe you've gone through all of them. Maybe you're catching up. But here's the basic feel of it. We spent that first six or so teaching you how these events work, the game and the workshop, how the model works, what are all the sliders, what are the reasons in the model, the system dynamics that lead to the behavior so that you can answer the questions about behavior over time. Now we're getting into a different mode. And this last week was about advanced facilitation. And the key here is the magic is not in the tool. The tool gets people in the door. It's just sexy and cool. The tool gets people to want to show up to events, but the magic is not delivered by a computer model. The real magic, when I say magic, it's the thing that has people have that aha experience, that transformational experience going from resignation to engagement, from despair to engagement, from denial to commitment. That magic happens because you've created some powerful conditions in the room, in the conversation, in your attitude as you engage people. So that's why we attend to advanced facilitation. And I hope you've watched the videos. If you haven't, go watch them because they're going, I'm going to go skip ahead to this. They're going to lay out what is necessary and helpful to go from good to great, to blow their minds. And when I say blow their minds, towards commitment to action. Three things that are needed, and the whole tool goes through this, like what it takes to create the conditions for learning. You got to have the conditions of reflective conversation where people are open to changing their mind about things. You've got to have vision, and people mentioned the rubber band. You've got to hold people in the space where they see a beautiful world that they are willing to do all it takes to get to. They're honest about what is, and they feel that tension between. They can see that we can make things better and commit themselves to hope. Vision. So there's a whole training on that and systems thinking, how this beautiful interdependent system is tightly coupled and what that means for effective climate strategy. So that's what we're going to do. People mentioned the rubber band. Here's this beautiful diagram that Caroline made. I think it's the coolest thing. It was based on an essay by my mentor, Beth Sawin's mentor, who John Sturman's mentor, Danella Meadows, who won a MacArthur Genius Award long ago, who wrote the book with her colleagues, The Limits to Growth, who brought at least three of us to this field of system dynamics. So it's an essay by her that's incredibly relevant to what we're doing together. So that's where we are with number eight. Number nine, model structure and testing. We just dropped these videos. We haven't dropped the videos of Professor Sturman. He shot, I think, four of them, but they're still under review. So they'll be out soon, but the rest are there. So nerds, all you nerds, and I know a lot of you are nerds, join and go check out all of these under the hood model structure and testing videos that we've just posted. What is the structure of Enroth? How does the darn software work even? What is it? What is this thing? How did we test it? All of that. So in a week, we're going to have the event on that model structure and testing under the hood. That is, you know, 24, no, one week from now, of course. We also next week on the 18th have a business meetup. So all of you who are in the business world, and if you'd like to meet each other and be hosted by uh, Chris Page, who is our main liaison, liaison to that world, has run dozens of workshops for businesses. And along the way, well, in that first event in a week, we're going to 
look into this important diagram in the new a IPCC report, the AR6 report. They said, we're going to look at five scenarios in that report. And we're going to show you a little bit about how you, what they are, what does this mean, SSP1 1.9, and how can you recreate them in En-ROADS if you want to use En-ROADS to bridge insights from AR6 into what you do with your, uh, with your workshops and your games, or if people just ask you about it, you're going to be ready. Okay, that's where we are. Where are we going next? This is transition time. This is you going from student running or learning about these tools, moving into the world. Why are we going into the world? Because we want to keep coal, oil, and gas in the ground, take all the other actions that are necessary to address climate change. So you have a tool. You will be able to, and you can now, engage your community, whether it's your family, town, state, province, country, the world, business, whatever it is. So you're ready increasingly to find a team. And those could be other trainees. Those could be other ECAs. Those could be people you just bring aboard and say, go take the course yourself. Find a little team, two people, whatever. Start running in events. Register it, please. And if you can right now, Yazzie, just send a link where you register for them. Put your pin on the big map that we have here down at the bottom. You can see all the ones that we've registered. And work become to become an En-ROADS Climate Ambassador. You have to run a couple events. You get some feedback. Uh, please do that because we just would love to know what you're doing and keep track of all the people who are out there using the, the, the sim. Okay, before I go into the main content and the discourses of delay, Anybody, Ellie, Yazzie, team, anything to add before we dive into the real content here of, and a little bit of the game that we're going to play? No, go for it. All right. There's this great paper. Yazzie, can you send the link? Discourses of Climate Delay. What they did is they cataloged and organized the 12 things that they think, Lamb et al., you hear the most often when people say, oh, we don't need to take serious action or we can wait or we only need to focus on that or blah, 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 all that gets said. And of course, those are many of the exact things that you have heard and you will hear as you engage people with En-ROADS. And they organize it into four big areas, you know, emphasize the downsides. Oh, if we take action, it's gonna be terrible. Change will be disruptive. No, why should we act? Someone else should do it first. Yeah, we should act, but let's do this stuff that won't help that much. Number four, I give up. I give up. Those are the big four areas that we've heard about. So what do you do when you hear these things? Now, the key thing we've said, New information doesn't change people's minds. New experiences do. So your job when you hear these as an En-ROADS facilitator in the game in the workshop is not to argue with the people and convince them that they're wrong. People don't want to be wrong. And it's really hard to <laughs> counter a statement like, I give up, we're screwed with, you're wrong, here's why. People are not open to changing their mind. At least our strategy with this tool, of course, is to create experiences where they get to discover for themselves if they really believe that, whatever discourse is coming up. So the challenge in this game that we're gonna do in this exercise is we're gonna present in the words of this paper what that discourse is. And then we're gonna think how to use En-ROADS to help people discover, do they really believe that or not? Now you may disagree, so you're gonna lead them towards discovering that, but you're not gonna get in a debate with them. You're going to use En-ROADS. So my question is, when you see one of these discourses, what would you do with En-ROADS? What slider would you show? What graphs would you show? What is the framing? What 
10 sliders would you move? Uh, so, okay, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna ask you to do it in poll everywhere because we wanna hear what you do. So think about it and write into poll everywhere as briefly as possible. Here's what I'm thinking we should do. I'm gonna read it and then we're gonna go back to it. We're gonna go to the poll. I haven't opened the poll everywhere yet. So what they say is a discourse of delay is, quote, you know, we should focus our efforts on future technologies, R&D, which will unlock, oops, um, possibilities for addressing climate change. Let's focus on future technologies. So here I go, I'm gonna go to the poll. Hopefully I am finding the next poll excuse me a second, and it's still showing me this one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up the poll and here it comes. How would you use En-ROADS to respond? I'm activating, I'm showing full screen. How would you use en to the idea that you're gonna hear, put in new zero carbon energy new carbon zero carbon capture new thank you this is the idea so what would you show we need advanced new zero carbon let's see what a breakthrough new zero carbon technology would do move the slider for tech carbon capture technological carbon removal there's another one new zero carbon and carbon removal technology traditional activities so how would you, carbon removal? All right, you guys are pretty clear, CO2 removal. I think you're onto something because these are the two big areas. Oh, interesting. And someone's already going to doing a mental simulation. Great, carbon storage, CCS, there's a third one. Okay, so what you're talking, what, Look, you're talking about several of the things, respect their ideas, move all the sliders that are new tech and see what happens. Okay, fantastic. So let's demonstrate what people, what you all are suggesting here in En-ROADS. So what the main thing you named, of course, and we've talked a good bit about, and it really was the, the first test of En-ROADS ever was new zero carbon technologies. So in that moment, you don't say your arguments about why that idea is not helpful. You say, okay, let's try it. And as someone suggested, how much do you think it would help? And you'd move over here to new zero carbon and you'd say, all right, here's what we would do. Of course, you would describe what it is, thorium fission, nuclear fusion. You would describe, and I'm not gonna do it right now, but what it's doing, it's gonna bring in this source cheaper than coal. And of course, you may want to pull up the graph that shows final energy consumption for new zero carbon technology. And let's try it. People will guess. They talk to each other. What do you think it's going to do? Oh, boom. There it is. And we can explore what it does. And they get to see it is no silver bullet that that idea is perhaps true that some of these zero carbon technologies are going to need, be needed in the long term. After 2040, they're really going to keep CO2 and greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. However, it's not a silver bullet. It's not a silver bullet. Of course, you may want to dig into more about what's going on and prove to people that you really have made new, new zero carbon really cheap by showing the arrival of the orange marginal cost of electricity production, et cetera. But the key thing is with this one, simulate it for people and have them explore that effect. Several other good suggestions were made about carbon removal. Some of these technological carbon removal approaches exist in a pilot form. There have been small applications but like new zero carbon technology, this would fit into research and development into new technologies. One note, when you show these, don't show this graph at the top left. Show something relevant to this specific issue. We love to show the inputs on the left, the outputs on the right. In this case, it's this graph right here of CO2 removal. 
CO2, sources of net CO2 removal. And I love finding it here. Find it right there. So CO2 removal shows all of them. Don't change all of them. Talk to people about which one they would like. The one that gets talked about the most and is going is getting subsidized here in the United States, direct air capture. So you can say, well, what if this succeeded as much as the Royal Society thinks is possible? Then you can show, oh, it's going to reduce temperature somewhat. And someone will say, well, I think R&D is going to mean that we're going to have a lot more than that. Then, of course, you can go in here and explore the maximum carbon removal maximum to say it's going to be a lot more than just 2.8 gigatons. What if it's the maximum can be imagined at five? Well, it could be part of silver buckshot. It could be part of the many things that would get us down to two, but it is insufficient to wait for R&D with future technologies. A third one that's get talked about a lot and it's going to be a big deal here in the US is carbon capture and storage. It's a little buried, but under here we can explore uh, coal CCS and gas CCS. And so if you go here down to natural gas, primary energy demand, and show it, one that people may talk about, carbon capture and storage, it's a little buried. However, you can subsidize carbon capture and storage. Capture at the end of the smokestack, carbon dioxide, pump it somewhere else, shove it underground. What if we subsidize that a lot? Look at the growth of that dark area and make it grow a lot. It would mean there would be a lot more gas burn and it reduces greenhouse gases emissions a little bit. Great answers, great answers to the first question. Uh, let's do a second one. Fossil fuels, you'll hear this. They're becoming more efficient. They're the bridge towards a low carbon future. Fossil fuels are becoming more efficient. And so for this one, and they're the bridge, they're becoming much more efficient, less carbon emissions from them. So we set this one up as a poll. You got the idea? Which sliders would you move? Which test would you show? People are saying they're getting more efficient, low carbon, uh, clean coal. We're getting clean coal. What would you move to make the case no Actually, how would you have people the experience of seeing the truth of the matter, which is no, uh, encouraging efficient use of fossil fuels is not a path towards effective mitigation of climate change. So what would you show here? Boy, it's interesting, how is nuclear growing and then shrinking? Well, let's see, people are guessing energy efficiency. Subsidize natural gas, coal with carbon capture and storage, gas with carbon capture and storage. Great, this poll is working great. Okay, so how might you address this? So someone says, hey, you guys are showing a lot of policies here that go directly at keeping coal, oil, and gas in the ground. That's not necessary. Great news, win-win. We can use fossil fuels and address climate change because they're getting so efficient and they're getting so efficient. Now, one note, I, were, I used the word efficient, and I wanna note that 44% are saying energy efficiency, buildings and industry. So that is a great lever to move, absolutely use it. And I'm not seeing how it would be an effective way to address this. It would be an alternative to what they're advocating for, but, the way to address something like this is to simulate what they have in mind and show how limited the impact would be. So I would say don't show energy efficiency, even though that word efficient is in there. Energy efficiency in this case, in the poll, is referring to the efficiency of use of energy, not how people will say fossil fuels are efficient. And what they often mean is, they don't emit as much carbon as they used to because of new technologies. So what are people saying? Coal CCS, natural gas, and gas with CCS or carbon capture and storage. Great ideas, let's go try it. So 
We're going to go back over here to En-ROADS. And well, I pulled up Gold Ga Natural Gas CCS. Yes. A great thing to show here is what if we have a lot more natural gas with carbon capture and storage? And you're going to hear more and more about individual plants that will have this technology. But what we're simulating is the potential of the growth of this new industry over time, how long it will take to grow, and the possible extent give of its use given its cost. So go here, show natural gas, primary energy demand, because it shows this nice wedge here of this gray wedge of, of the gas CCS for electric use. And then what you can do is subsidize it and then imagine an R&D breakthrough where it gets a lot cheaper, where we have a lot of growth of gas CCS that keeps a little bit of greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. Mind you, more gas is fracked and burned. It'll be interesting too. Let's just note, systems thinking. What happens to methane under this scenario? Think, what happens to methane? You've looked at this model a lot. Look, as I saw that over there, natural gas. What happens to methane? I actually haven't looked at this. Gas CCS, methane emissions, but I think I know methane, more methane, more methane emissions at a time when we know we need methane basically to do that. We need it to do that, not go up. So more methane with this policy. Oh, that's ridiculous. Okay, what other things would we test? Well, let's go coal CCS you suggested. Coal with carbon capture and storage. This is what is called clean coal, all right? Clean coal because it's not clean. Uh, get coal CCS, more coal CCS gets cheaper. A lot of coal CCS, natural gas or greenhouse gas emissions go down 3.6 at 3.4 with global extension, extensive use of these two technologies. Very, so giving people the experience of seeing that, they're going to, I hope, correct some of their thinking about the use of these two approaches. But I wanna show another systems thinking approach here. Under here, what happens to air quality around the world? Because they'd be capturing, this technology captures carbon dioxide not NOx, SOx, not the things, the particulates that create PM 2.5 emissions implicated in lung disease, in cardiovascular disease, responsible with all air pollution for one in 10 deaths globally today. What happens to PM 2.5 emissions? Ask them to think about it and then go over here. Oh my God, look at this. Air pollution getting worse and worse and worse at a time when health push, multi-solving push, equity push would require us ethically to address this problem in the near term. Okay, some side effects there. The other thing that you suggested in the poll was natural gas. And so a simple answer to this, people will say, well, natural gas is has lower carbon emissions than coal. True. So maybe we encourage natural gas. So just simply go here and think about what if we have more natural gas? And the blue line goes up just a little bit. On net, it does not help to subsidize natural gas. We get a little more gas, we get a little less coal, we get a little less renewables too. Natural gas doesn't help. All right, so those were three simulation tests that you could do to address this story that some people say is we need to embrace fossil fuels. You're not gonna argue with them, you're going to lead them through those, at least those three experiences. All right, I think we have another one. Oh, we did the poll. So, Individuals and consumers are ultimately responsible for taking actions to address climate change. Who uses the energy? Come on, people. It's all being driven by individuals. And shouldn't individuals be the ones who solve this problem? 
they're ultimately responsible. When you hear that, and don't type into poll everywhere yet, I need to launch this. Um, I'm gonna go to previous, just give me one second, and I'm gonna clear responses and activate. So here's another one. So when you see that, when you hear that, what, what might you show in En-ROADS? Not an argument. You're not just going to use your words. How would you use En-ROADS to help people explore their commitment to that? Reduce utilization, utilization of fossil fuel. So FF utilization, transport, lower GDP, carbon price. So C price energy efficiency in buildings. So we're looking for what are the things we can test of individual action. Individual action. Deforestation, energy efficiency. Vegan. Efficiency, because people can do things. People can turn out the lights. People can drive less. People can take the bus. Transport electrification. Maybe people can buy electric vehicles there is what that would be, or electric bikes. Less consume, less energy. Change diet to plant-based. Degrowth of the economy. Degrowth of the economy, that would be like consumption. Electrification of transport. Renewable solar PV. Uh, we just installed PV panels. My individual behavior is right up above my head are PV panels, absolutely. Show the Kaya graphs. Vegan, electrification and energy efficiency of buildings, population growth. What if people don't just choose, I'm not gonna have as many kids. Individual personal behavior. All right, I'm gonna use the truth sandwich here and um, go to how we would address something like this. So what we've found and we've, of course, hear this a lot in workshops. What we found is that these are some of the best tests to do. And we can do them. There's a challenge to connecting the way that we move the sliders to exactly what is possible with individual behavior, particularly for, say, energy efficiency. But energy efficiency is a great one to show. However, it's tough to say that when you go under here to the improvement rate, of the energy efficiency of new of new buildings and industry infrastructure. This is things are improving 1.2% a year as they come into the world. How much faster would that improve if people turned out the lights, if people bought efficient refrigerators and lighting and things that uh, monitor the use of their air conditioners, et cetera, control devices. All of those things that people can choose to buy themselves. However, it's tough to imagine more than an increase of say 0.5%. So I would move this say to 1.7 and say, what if we globally had people taking individual action that improved the rate a whole half a percent a year? So we would get that improvement, individual action, and what would that mean? Less burning coal, oil, and gas. I don't know if you notice, look in the top left and you see energy demand overall, the top of all the wedges goes down a little bit. That's how it shows up. And what is, there it is, energy demand. This would be improved. People would require steadily over time, less and less energy. So that's a guess at what individual behavior on buildings and industry energy efficiency might do. So does it save the world? No. Does it help? Yes. And it's starting to shed a little doubt on can we rely on it fully? So another one might be people choosing to carpool, choosing to buy more efficient vehicles, choosing to take the bus, choosing to walk. In the same way, we could do another test. It's improving 0.5% a year. What if it improved another half a percent a year? In a similar way, it could make a contribution. It could make a contribution. So those are two of the top two. 
Um, another one, of course, is eating vegetarian, eating vegan and vegetarian, plant-based diets, which is going to affect several things in the model. There's a whole training in it, of course. Go watch that video that explains what to do. Just to summarize, though, you would go over here um, and we would affect, we don't show the energy use, right? Go over to the left and say, what do we care about here? This is about methane. Methane comes from cows. It also comes mostly from coal, oil, gas, wastewater, landfills, industry. So what if we imagine plant-based diets and Scoop Jones on our team did some math to say, if you went under here, under here to methane and other, the, the FAO, a group that studies agricultural use and emissions, did came up with a diet. Was it F FDA? We can look it up. Maybe uh, actually, Yazzie, if you would send the link to the notes for this methane and other, because this is where it's written up. But it's basically wide adoption of, of plant-based diets would reduce methane and other. Oh, excuse me, not here, but in detailed settings. Um, let me just reset that. Would make this zero and then use detailed settings. What you do is you go to ag and waste emissions and you type in negative 20. So a big dent in methane emissions, not a full dent, <laughs> but a big dent. And so what it does is it brings down greenhouse gas net emissions a little bit. And it also, there's another impact we should explore, which is it means there would be less deforestation because we wouldn't have to convert as much forests into agricultural land to grow all the food for all the cows. And so this could be minus 1.5 to calibrate to that other study. And so it could chop off an important 0.1 degrees of future temperature. However, we can see, put those three things together, roughly this, this, and this, in those three areas, it is a contribution. 0.3 degrees is a big deal. And it is not enough. It takes many seeds to plant this garden. Now, you all suggested a lot of other things. We can look at slightly lower population growth. Consumption can go down. And people could choose to meet their physical needs with less consumption of energy and materials. Those would be two other things to add. But as I'm helping you, we find the top three to show are the energy efficiency actions and deforestation. And possibly you can go on to show population, perhaps less consumption. Um, oh, but also people are buying more uh, photovoltaic panels on their roof. So we could imagine more encouragement of that. So the short answer is go through and test with modest levels and what that could do and show that it could help a good bit but in no way is it sufficient. And note that there's a very strong PR campaign, particularly funded by the fossil fuel industry and others who stand to lose a lot of money if we take serious action on climate change, promoting the idea that this is really the only thing that is serious about what's going on that should be done. Um, that is because if all of this did happen, we would still burn a lot more, in particular, oil for the next 30 years. So there's a, if we just focus on individual behavior, it is a recipe for continuing to burn coal, oil, and gas and miss many of our targets. Now, of course, if you complement this with other actions and another individual action, of course, is to join the global climate movement that many of you are doing right now to advocate for a carbon price and less coal and oil and the many other actions that bring us all the way down towards two degrees. Okay, so there is a, some of the description about individual action. And I think this next one, uh, this next one, I'm gonna set us up into breakout rooms to talk about this one. Any mitigation action we take are too little too late. It's already locked in. We should adapt or accept our fate. It's already locked in. Catastrophic climate change is already locked in. 
Keyword there, catastrophic. Of course, some climate change is baked in and the new IPCC report explained that in very clear terms. But we're interested, we're gonna send you to breakout rooms and when you hear this one, what do you do with En-ROADS? What do you do with En-ROADS? How do you address it? So what we'd like you to do is you're gonna to go to a breakout room, introduce yourself, your name, your location. And then when you hear people say, we're doomed, there's nothing we can do anymore. How might you use En-ROADS to help respond? It's not everything to answer this question, but how might you use En-ROADS? You get the idea of how, what I've demonstrated so far. So introduce yourself and then talk about how do you address the we're doomed idea with En-ROADS and in these events, and perhaps outside of En-ROADS as well, when people come to you with this idea. So we're gonna give, I believe 10 minutes, well, eight minutes. So uh, Yazzie, can you send folks to, uh, to the breakout rooms? All right, folks, welcome back. So uh, as you know, we are super committed to ending at the top of the hour. So we have a, just four minutes to address this and send you forward. We're gonna formally end at the top of the hour in four minutes, but we would love to invite you, if you wanna stay on, we have some other poll questions to ask you about and thinking about which is gonna happen next. Um, and then also we're gonna have some breakout rooms where you can meet other people in your sector. So you had just a little bit of time to talk about arguably the most important challenge in these workshops and in the world as we engage people on addressing climate change. Um, I wanna point out some of the resources for answering this question. Many people enjoyed the rubber band video and the video about using the rubber band, which is the vision video. So this question is addressed in that. How do we deal with people who are losing hope, resignation, despair, we're screwed. Um, it's got to come from where you can really get in touch with that feeling and the empathy you have for how people feel about that. So first, get in touch with yourself about it. There isn't a quick technical answer. Watch the rubber band video and all that. Um, with the arguments around it, actually, I wrote an op-ed with my colleague Auden Schendler that I thought was a, at least my answer when that 1.5 report came out. Um, it was what I think I could put into what a New York Times reader might read, just 800 words on the topic. So maybe Yazzie, if you can send a link to, it's called uh, Stopping Climate Change is Impossible. Let's do it. So that's a little bit to some resources. Now, the key thing, of course, the key answer that we have, and you probably came up with a lot of good ideas, but the core premise of the workshop in the game is to answer this problem of doomism. It's to give people the experience of creating a scenario they would love to see. So I think the short answer is run the workshop. And so there's no one simple thing. It is to ask people, what might we do so that we don't head to this world where we're really, this is catastrophic climate change, 3.6, a world that we cannot adapt to. What can we do? And then ask them the 30 questions necessary to get you down here to a scenario that will keep coal, oil, and gas in the ground and reduce energy demand and reduce deforestation emissions and do all these things that get us darn close to the 1.5 goal that we really want. Give people that experience. That's the, our short answer, given that we have very little time. The second part of it is you notice, and this came out of AR6, which is this report that just came from the IPCC earlier this week, there was a really important sense, I think it was called B2, in the summary, summary for policymakers, which is, and I couldn't find the quote right here, but it was something like, uh, we, 
I guess that I'll, I'll, I don't try to quote the scientists because that's dangerous. Uh, it's summarized as the world is going to continue warming. Excuse me, the world is going to continue warming. How much is up to us? And so if you go here to temperature, after you create this scenario, you get to see this graph, which summarizes that important insight. Here we are in 2021. Hey, Drew, you, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, sorry. Uh, and we're at the top of the hour, too. OK. So folks, give me a minute to make this last point before we close. I'm going to share the screen and close. So the summary, when you get to making that scenario, the summary show this graph, which illustrates for them in the scenario that they created, that the world is going to continue warming over this next at least 10 years. Do you notice that graph in En-ROADS? How much is up to us? And abundant science as laid out in that report and in many reports shows the radically different world created by the black line that's headed up to 3.6 versus the blue line. So how much is up to us, the difference between the black line and the blue line? Yes, some change is inevitable. Be honest about that. But how much warming is up to us? All right, so those are just some ideas. We should talk definitely about more ideas here, but here's what's gonna happen next before I close out formally. Go run workshop gamer demo, go register it. Yazzie, can you send a link to how you register your events and work to become an En-ROADS climate ambassador. Join this group of people. Many of you on the phone, or excuse me, on this call are already doing this around the world uh, and join this group of people. Okay, we're formally closing out the hour training. Uh, so take these tools, join next week, watch the next set of videos, go run a workshop, register it, become an ambassador, go get them, you can do it. And we'd love if you wanna stick around for some more questions that we have of you, and then also some of these breakout rooms. So I'm gonna like open up the questions that we have of you. So I just said, go run a workshop, go run a game. Here's my question. Uh, where are you going to do it? Oh, uh, hold on. Hold. Okay. So uh, full screen. Where or for whom will you run your next? workshop, game, demo, a church on the 22nd, and the Rotary Club on the 30th, fantastic. A group of friends online, great. People interested in climate at your church, love it. Your students at the library, wonderful, wonderful. Your close family tomorrow uh, with your coworkers in the environment, you hope online for an arts organization, wonderful. Your family, a couple climate skeptics, great. School children, one-on-one -on -one with a friend, baby steps, that's good. Two big tips, take baby steps, do it with a friend, do it with a partner, another trainee or another En-ROADS climate ambassador. United church women, a friend, town council, a university class. Start with my family, some folks online. High schools, wonderful. Rotary or Autobahn this fall, love it. City of Glendale, Sustainability Committee, wonderful. Family online. God, I wish I, I can't get my family to do it online. That's cool. <laughs> Executive Director of Piedmont Environmental Alliance, family, online for a group of alumni, maybe a school that you went to with a youth group, fantastic. This is so helpful to see what other people are doing. And I hope this is inspirational for some of you that haven't done it yet. Birat Nagar, Nepal for network members. Wonderful. County Climate Advisory Committee, family. North and Anderson, Community Church, Climate Reality Action, South Carolina, colleague, co college class. Okay, this is great. November, 
I'm actually just interested of time. I'm going to move on with CSOs to the next question. So as you think about this, as you're running this, or even if you don't have plans, but you're thinking about running one of these events, what is the feeling or experience you would like to have? Something is compelling you. You want to feel a certain way. What is the feeling or experience? You want to have that sense, hey, I'm empowering participants. I'm empowering, my, empowering myself. The feeling of making a difference. You want to spread hope. Wonderful. This is moving me. I love this. You want to feel like that you're galvanizing, instilling hope and action. You want to be the change that you want to see the world. You want to see people engaging others. So you're going to be that. Inspire hope and energy towards action, advocacy for regulation and legislation. You want to feel that you open people's minds, inspiring a love for a more positive world. Involve staff or house member. You want to have that experience of igniting action. Always excited and creative. Satisfaction, excitement, people have action and hope. Expand our mental models about what's, what's possible. Changing minds, wonderful. These are great. Sharing purpose and more awareness. Want to feel my community cares. Wow, 34, 74 of you are still here. That's great. Stubborn optimism, stubborn optimism, encouragement from the audience that they plan to become more engaged to influence members of Congress. Hope, make a difference, wonderful. Okay, want to arm people with action, empowering people. All right, I'm moving on to the next one. Start thinking and changing the world to a better place. Okay. Okay. How can we support you to make that happen? We want you to feel those ways. We want you to experience that. We've laid out a training program. We have a support site that you can ask questions to. We have FAQs. We have this community. We have the community site on the Learn Worlds program. We have all the videos and this. How can we, we have all these ideas. We thought maybe we individually email people. Oh, you feel totally supported. Oh, that's great. Uh, advertise events that you can attend. Great. Keep some support community going beyond the course. Keep the support open. And two new training videos are super helpful. Great. Oh, we've done a great job. Ah, oh, mentorship of ambassadors. Mentorship. Wonderful. A certain. Oh. We have a certificate to become an ambassador. All you gotta do is register a couple events, apply to be an ambassador and you get a certificate. Could you get someone with more experience on the Zoom working together, practice and have comments how to improve? Update the simulator, we will do that no matter what. Some more simulation sessions. These programs are great. Create more time for us, ha ha ha, yeah. Mentorship, now it's up to us, all right. Ideal graphs to show for each slider, interesting. Can I use on the material on the course forever? Yes, like a badge, it could show our profile pics, it'll make an impact. This is wonderful. Keep typing because we'll be able to read these even if I don't read them out loud right now. Uh, if you get it at requests, please share it. Mentorship or buddy system, wonderful. These are really great. Okay, this last question I'm gonna ask, this is really helpful. The last question I'm gonna ask, like thinking on the, right now on this call, Ellie, Yazzie, Janet, Clara, Caroline, the team that put this whole training program together. The modelers may be here, but they hear from us as well. The people, the developers who built the model, the researchers, scientists who built the model, our partners at MIT, the funders who find the resources so that we can pay to create all this stuff, okay? I'm really curious, and this is out of the spirit of gratitude as well, just what would you say that those people that would be helpful for all of them to hear either just about your general gratitude and just appreciation. One thing that keeps anybody going is that sense that it's make, well, 
is, is a sense of what impact it's having. I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. What impact is this having out there? Oh, here's, this is more answers to my uh, last questions, I think. Um, I'm gonna clear responses and then uh, activate. We're part of the solution. Their work is giving life some direction and purpose. Oh, wonderful. What a great legacy. Yeah, this is gonna live on. More powers to you. This is gonna live on. Fast tech job, oh, wonderful. Gives you hope and continue. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm answering these, anyone on the team. So others on the team, you guys unmute any reactions of what you're hearing here. Let this in, Ellie, Yazzie, Janet, Clara, Caroline. Um, un, unpin me, please. I want you guys, uh, could others of you read these? Who, who's first? Yazzie, you've often done this. Will you read some of these? Sure. You, oh, going fast. This really matters. Thanks for your dedication. Awesome content. You lift us up from feeling helpless and confused to feeling empowered and smart, feeling the love. Thank you for your commitment to building this tool. <laughs> I feel empowered. <laughs> <laughs> Great initiative. This is part of the climate solution. We're spreading hope together. Thanks for this useful insight. Thanks for your terrific work on this. Doing something extraordinary that will plant seeds and build a forest that embraces the world. I felt disconnected from my env environmental passion before this training, and now I'm more motivated than Aww. ever. That's great. <laughs> Part of future possibilities. This training has provided me with a powerful tool to integrate into an online sustainability course for young people in my country. Nice. Wonderful. <laughs> I've given doom and gloom climate talks. Now I can empower action that can effectively miss the last part. <laughs> I have watched Ellie grow. Very nice. Wonderful. <laughs> Anything from our team hearing any of this before I, I saw someone raise their hand and I want to give them the floor for a second. Others to say anything, Ellie, Yazzie, Clara, Janet, Caroline. Okay, I saw someone raise their hand. A, a, a loke, a, oh wow, even the long one. A loke, someone raised their hand. And if you have something to say on this topic, um, why not? Maybe we can unmute you and, and then we're gonna move on to our breakout rooms. Can we do that, Yazzie? Are you able to unmute? If, if, did you see that raised hand? Yeah, I see it's lowered now, so I'm not sure. Well, Alok, if you want, if you want the floor, please raise your hand, yeah. Um, you have something to say on this? We, let's unmute you and uh, yeah. Well, uh, the climate interactive session was very nice. Uh, I had uh, not too much clue because I have worked already almost 10 years in this energy intensive sector. But when I tried to grab this opportunity to work on different sliders, it really felt the difference because when I was making some uh, uh, workshops, people used to tell this will work, that will work, but I, I can show them. Yes, this is not working. See, this, this is, if you will do this, then this will work. And Wonderful. moreover, the presentation skill of Andrew and uh, the response from Ailey and everything, the team is quite, quite positive. I'm looking forward to work with you all and make this awareness system much more stronger and stronger because I believe as I'm okay. from India, it is a growing nation and developing nation. Um, there is much scope of improvement because more empowerment people will be, then that will be a game changer for this climate initiative. Thank you so Thank much, you. Alok. Thank you, well said. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going into two areas. One is join a breakout room in your sector or pick a sector and you're gonna meet other people and talk with them about your experiences. Where are you gonna run your next workshop? How is it going? So everyone introduce yourselves and share your experiences. We're gonna stay here for a few minutes and answer questions particularly related to advanced facilitation and handling 
the toughest moments, maybe things that came up in chat. Um, so Yazi, could you open up those groups? Uh, this is more self-organized. And then we're going to stick around and we hope to be able to answer any other questions that you have. Great, and just as a reminder, um, to access the breakout rooms this time, you're not being automatically sent to them. Go and uh, find the button that says breakout rooms. It's at the bottom of my Zoom screen. And when you click on that, uh, you can pick a breakout room. So we have breakout rooms for business, for education, community groups, public policy. If you join the breakout room and there aren't many people there, just hang tight and hopefully someone else will join you. Uh, and you can join those breakout rooms or we can stay here in the main room and chat too if uh, people have questions that we didn't get to. But oh, and the secret to when you click on that breakout rooms button, you'll get a pop up window and then hover over the number of people in the room and then that will say join. And you can join through that. Looks like we have a bunch of people joining the business group and the education group. There were a couple of people in policy and community and I think they didn't have any friends so they left. Um, maybe somebody can write into the chat if you're interested in going to those and find, a, find others or jump over to education and business. And if you have any uh, remaining outstanding questions, please write them into the chat. Uh, we've got a few more minutes here. Maybe just to start, um, anyone on the team see in the past any questions that came up in chat that didn't get addressed that we should start with? that seemed particularly like, oh my gosh, Drew, you left this out. It was big, how'd you leave that out? Or anything, or should we just go to who's questions from in the room right now? Uh, I see a question from Al concerning the game format. A lot depends on how much the facilitator moves the slider. What slider to pick depends on that. Yeah, Al, this is something we've kind of gone back and forth and talked about in facilitating the climate action simulation. You're trying to figure out how much to move the slider when somebody says, hey, I wanna subsidize renewable energy. And you may have noticed how I did it last week, or not last week, uh, the week that I we were running the climate action simulation on the Zoom. Sometimes I moved it pretty far, and it's sort of a calculus of how much time there is. But I, but I, uh, if I if I'm able to have a good amount of time for the exercise, I'll move it one label. So if you notice when you move uh, the inroad slider, the labels will change. I'll move it till the I'll, I'll drag it slowly until the label changes and kind of those each label represents a range on the slider. So kind of setting it along there, but there's no precise science to it. Do what works for you uh, in the group. Sometimes when you're when you have not enough time, it makes sense to just move them pretty far. Um, and generally, too, I, I like I'll move most of the sliders to their maximum. I do typically hesitate to move the climate uh, the carbon removal, technological carbon removal slider to its maximum, just because that represents like how many different carbon removal types do we have? Five, six different types, um, all being successful. And as Drew talked about earlier, those are all, some of them are very early stage developments. So the chance that they'll all be successful to me seems pretty low. And $50 a ton for each move on the carbon price is what we tend to like. One move is $50 a ton. Michelle's asking, can we lower emissions while having political leaders who are not on board? This we is have, a challenge. <laughs> we, have no, we have no analysis to say whether this is true or not, okay? So this is not something that we can answer better than you all. Uh, and no. 
it seems like we're going to need collective action via our governments, via our political leaders to make this happen. Uh, that's my conclusion, uh, but we're not experts in this. And so uh, that's why we're so excited about engaging political leaders and it's happening. I'm looking at more questions. So there's a question Al's asking, IPCC has current increase of temperature at one plus or minus 0.2. Well, En-ROADS has 1.3. What are we to say? So this is one of the things that gets addressed a little bit more in the next week's area. Um, I also wanna look at We've done a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different measures of temperature. Is it relative to 1850 or 1750? So I'm gonna wanna look at that, Al. I see you nodding. Um, I'm guessing that that could be a source of the difference, um, but also just note, you hear that plus or minus 0.2 and some people would really like us to add that range of the plus or minus and you could say, well, what is that plus or minus about? And just opening En-ROADS here and the temperature, of course, where that plus or minus is that shows up um, will be in the climate sensitivity to a doubling of carbon, different assumptions for that. And those are things that will in the future affect things. Um, so we try to calibrate to the measurements that are out there, but, uh, let us look into it before I answer definitively and make sure that they have the same base here. Others that you see, Ellie, or ones that you want to grab? How might we respond to a comment that the simulator information ultimately comes from the government and the government can't be trusted? Interesting. So I would encourage you to avoid a discussion of whether we should trust the government. If you can, acknowledge that that's a legitimate thought, but go around it to here's how we build confidence in our simulation. And in particular, as you give this description, you'll notice there's very little that the government itself controls regarding this model and how we build confidence in it itself. And so actually the next, the, the course that we just released this morning explains all of the tests that we do and why we have confidence in this model. Um, and so I think that the short answer is don't take the bait of getting into trust the government, say, Again, if you watch the truth sandwich, say we built En-ROADS with the best available science working with MIT using measured data from these different scientific groups, calibrating and testing against these other simulators. Everything is shared in the reference guide and you can change many of the assumptions yourself. And we have a whole training now in the course. Some people are concerned about the role of government that's a legitimate concern. And yet we've built a lot of confidence and we think it's better than people's mental models. So we hope we can use En-ROADS. That's how you would use the truth sandwich to address that one. Anything else that anyone else says? LA or, there's my, that's my take. Yeah, and I mean, I, I don't work for the government. We, none of us work for the government. So that's, that's another thing is we, we are independent. I don't, Think we even have government funding these days last i checked so um that's another thing this isn't coming from any kind al, of government. al asked about uncertainty bars so a lot of our work on other analysis has included them it's funny we're talking with a foundation right now that says we want you to add them so what we might do is you hit a button and you say i don't want to see one line i want to see three lines with a a range we found that it's not particularly helpful to everybody, so we might make it optional. 
And I'm noticing, well, I have a meeting in five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to need to just take one last one myself, but maybe the team, if they want, can answer more. Um, but I don't see another one. And I, oh, wait, there's Jack waving his hand. Jack, you got something. Um, maybe, yeah, Jack, unmute. What do you got? I think we need you to unmute. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Just a quick comment and an observation. I was particularly touched by the last session that we had on facilitating and uh, drew your approach to uh, bringing out the human aspect of it. And I felt that this was something that if it was at some level introduced earlier in the course would fill a gap that I felt throughout the course that there is a human component to this. And this is part of the reason that we're doing all of this, but it was really a good session. Interesting. Um, Thank you, Jack. Uh, and, and say a little bit more about like the human component. So we could add something to the very first part of this is, this is a model. You're gonna learn a lot about a computer model and the computer model is so woefully insufficient because what you're doing is you're in conversation with people, with feelings and emotions, with people who are interacting with other people. And so that's super important. And we're going to get there. Be patient. It's in part seven. Like that kind, is that? Um, or what, that, what, when you say human, what, what part of it do you think is important to well, say earlier? Well, there's, there's an issue that has to do with people feeling despair. Yeah. And how do you connect that feeling of despair with the possibility of some kind of optimism? And I sent a link earlier. I sent a, a chat earlier. Uh, with an article that was posted from the New Republic just today uh, that talks about this issue. It's a really good article. And after your session, this last session, um, reading the article, the two just came together nicely. Yeah. So you might want to just check that. It's so maybe really finding a way to acknowledge where people may be coming from as they approach this course, you may be yes. feeling despair. And yeah. We want to help you as a facilitator work with others who may be in that mode and yourself. Thank you, Jack. That, that's helpful. So I notice I'm going to go and Ellie, you want to decide what's next, but uh, you're in charge. <laughs> okay, thanks, Drew. And thanks, everyone. Uh, welcome back from the breakout groups. Um, I hope those were fruitful. It looked like we mostly just had business and education. And reminder if you were in that business group, um, Chris Page, who works uh, on our team, specifically on inroads engagement with business, will be facilitating the business meetup next week. We'll send a link to that uh, in the follow-up email later today. So look out for that. And I, I did see someone in the chat asking about like an educators meetup. You know, I we let we're going to keep exploring different possibilities for meetups. Um, if you want to help facilitate one, feel free to email us. Um, let's keep this going. Um, anyways, thank you all so much. We're almost half an hour after. Take care. And I see some messages. I'll try and reply to those, but uh, let's wrap up here. Thanks, everyone. Oh, one question to a lot of people have asked. The content will stay available online. We're not going to take it down at some point. So if you're slow in watching videos, not to fear. It will not disappear next week. Uh, we're going to leave it up. Bye everyone, take care. Thanks for all you're doing out there. Really appreciate you all.